good afternoon and greetings from Izmir. Uh, yeah, good, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> so now we're sharing the yeah. screen PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Our presentation includes part of an ongoing research project titled Interpreting and Teaching Interpreting in Virtual Worlds, funded by the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey and run by the Translation and Interpreting Departments and Computer Engineering Department at is the University of Economics to the Yale University. The focus of the presentation is the experience of in a by professionals and students of interpreting, and in this study, we aim at exploring the interpreters and interpreting students for the new and training environment with our research project. When it comes to the rationale for this project, the changing nature of and the emerging needs and demands in the translation and interpreting profession urge the translation and interpreting educators to provide learners with opportunities to experience new ways of teaching and learning. Due to the diversity of real-life interpreting contexts and situations, both in conference and public service settings, interpreter training should ideally aim at preparing novice interpreters for as various situations as possible and equipping them with the skills required for this unique task. Interpreting students have fewer hours for practice in the classroom and lab due to the reduction of the higher education budget as an overall educational policy. In addition, the Bologna process brings forth the reformation of curricula and places an emphasis on self-directed learning and lifelong learning, resulting in fewer contact hours with the trainers. Also, Lack of Turkish material for interpreting students makes practice a challenge for teachers and students in our field. Availability of professional interpreters to teach interpreting courses at universities is another problem. As recognized widely in the literature on the practice and teaching of interpreting, integration of information and communication technology in interpreting training has become inevitable in the recent decades. We, we cannot hear you very well. New approaches, methods, and equipment are required, both for improving skills of interpreting students and preparing them for remote interpreting that is becoming more and more common, especially in public service settings. The EU-funded project IV was launched in 2011 under the leadership of Sabine Brown. Please. Yes? Please. No, no, no. Can you pause the, the streaming? Can you close the streaming door? Yes. You are no end of the streaming. We actually don't have it, I think. I have it. I have it. Did you just start? Close. No. Is it better now? Is it better now, sir? Okay. The EU-funded project IV was launched in 2011 under the leadership of Sabine Brown. The IV project, with its multiple collaborating universities and multilingual nature, has provided a strong example of integrating 3D virtual worlds into interpreter training. Upon the successful completion of the IV project and its follow-up project Eviva, and building on existing knowledge, we have undertaken to build a similar virtual environment to meet the needs of interpreted training in the context of Turkey, creating our own technical solutions and infrastructure and focusing on a variety of interpreting activities. Chevy project has proven itself as an important contribution to studies conducted in this line of research. Thus, in our project, we have launched a 3D virtual environment with a built-in corpora consisting of dialogues, speeches, and presentations in different fields for simultaneous and consecutive interpreting with various levels of difficulty. The departure point of our project is to contribute to content and variety in interpreter training through virtual worlds, providing a flexible, diverse, and interactive learning environment, eliciting feedback from professional interpreters and interpreter trainers 
besides interpreting students, is crucial to identify the advantages and shortcomings of this new working environment and to improve our core brain accordance with the needs of target groups. Now, my colleague Gazi Hanalagush will explain the technical aspects of the project. Yes, hello. Uh, so the technical infrastructure of our project contains Second Life client and servers as well as our own client and server software. The users are students and instructors. Uh, Second Life is an existing multi-user platform in which you can interact with other users in a shared 3D virtual environment. And we extend it so that we can use it as a learning platform. To use Second Life, the user downloads the Second Life client viewer application, which connects to the Second Life servers. Each user connects to the Second Life servers and they experience the shared environment and inter interact with each other, which is the left side of this figure here, left side boxes. We extend this system in the following ways. We extend the server side with another shared server that we host. This runs PHP, Laravel, and MySQL. And this keeps information about our students, teachers, scenarios, and played scenario records. Uh, the virtual scenarios in the Second Life servers communicate with these to run. And in the client side on the bottom here, uh, we have a shaver app that runs alongside with the Second Life client and communicates with it through inter-process communication. We had to modify the open source Second Life client to do this. And this app also communicates with our server so that you can choose a scenario, get teleported to the Second Life location that contains the scenario's environment, play the scenario with its animations and sounds, and record the user's voice. And once the scenario is completed, it creates a played scenario record that contains the sound recording. Teachers later review this played scenario record through a simple web browser and grade these interpreting performances. And they can also upload or modify scenarios or make security adjustments. So this is the overview of our system. And here is the login screen of our Chavit app. The user downloads and logs into this and sees the various scenarios that are on the server already. And in parallel, they look into the regular Second Life clients that we have modified for IPC purposes. And they come to our island automatically. This is our island. They go around. They see a bunch of tutorials that we have prepared so that they get accustomed to Second Life as well as our app. And then, you know, through these tutorials, they learn how to use the system. And then we have this uh, teleportation uh, location, which is modeled as a, a bus stop. So it tells them they will go somewhere. And they come here and they, um, yeah, here's the video. So I can... Okay, so they come to this um, uh, bus stop, the teleportation location, and they click there to see the available scenarios. So these are the scenarios that we had prepared. These are virtual uh, situations in which they will do interpreting and they get teleported to the scenario automatically uh, in the system, in the virtual world, and they get a note that explains what they need to do, and there's a robot here that we have programmed that uh, moves in synchronization with the sound, so it looks like she's speaking. Uh, we get these sounds from various sources, and yeah, the user is in this environment doing the interpretation and uh, translation. And at the same time, his, his or her voice is recorded, and when it's done, he's teleported back to the lobby area, and his uh, or her uh, recording is uploaded through this app that we have. And after it is uploaded automatically, uh, he or she can also listen back to it again, if he or she wants. Uh, since it's uploaded to our server, uh, later the, the instructors will also be able to come in and grade it, which is in the next slide. So here's another video. Uh, the instructor logs into our website and he or she can uh, look at the student's uh, played scenario record um, and see when it was done and also listen to the voice recording of the student when he was uh, doing the interpretation during the scenario. And after listening to it, he or she can give a grade to the student and give some extra feedback on what he or she is supposed to improve. So this is pretty much what our system is like. And now I'll give back to my uh, colleague here so she can uh, tell the rest of the situation. Thank you. In order to gain insight into the current situation in terms of preferences and attitudes towards technology and ICTs in general, and related to interpreting in particular, preliminary surveys were given to 26 professional interpreters. 
The professional interpreters were contact, uh, contacted through personal contacts as well as the Turkish Conference Interpreters Association. Having a general overview on the preferences and attitudes of professionals, we organized practice sessions for them in Second Life using Chevira. Five experienced interpreters participated in these sessions. Prior to the trial, an orientation was provided to the participants on accessing, teleporting and interpreting in Second Life. The interpreters were asked to interpret two speeches simultaneously from Turkish to English and vice versa. Post-session surveys were filled in by the interpreters who participated in the practice sessions in order to elicit their opinions regarding their interpreting experience in Second Life and their suggestions concerning the improvement of the virtual environment. Out of 26 interpreters in the preliminary survey, 12 teach interpreting at universities. Three out of these 12 are full-time faculty members in translation and interpreting departments. With respect to interpreting experience, seven interpreters have more than 15 years of interpreting experience, eight interpreters between 10 to 15, four between 5 to 10, and the remaining seven have less than five years of experience. Thus, 73% of the participants deemed as experienced interpreters. The current situation indicates that the most frequently used materials in interpreting classes consist of video recordings and text read by the trainer. Only 16% of participants stated that they use audio recordings, which might be attributed to the difficulty of accessing real-life recordings. Original speeches made by lecturers in their own fields of expertise are recorded and adapted to the Second Life environment within the scope of our project. This might offer a solution to accessing audio speeches and contribute to the diversity of practice material, especially in Turkish, which is lacking. The existing disadvantages mentioned by the trainers include the high number of students, fewer contact hours, and technical problems in the lab. Also, all participants stated that novice interpreters need to practice interpreting after graduation before they can actually work at conference. Second Life can actually be a promising platform for practice as it provides a self-study option with or without the supervision of the trainer. 73% of all participants mentioned that they feel comfortable using technology and computers, which might mean that Second Life facilitates their work if they are provided with the necessary orientation. Among the reasons for rejection of interpreting assignments, interpreters frequently mention working conditions, which include transport and accommodation, having more than one assignment at a time, lack of equipment, safety, and difficulty of travel. If Second Life is used as a platform for remote interpreting, these challenges can obviously be overcome. 46% of the participants they had, uh, mentioned that they had remote interpreting experience either through video or telephone interpreting. 78% among those with remote interpreting experience stated that they did not feel comfortable due to mainly technical reasons such as connection, sound quality, turn-taking, and not being able to see the speaker and presentation. However, it's clear that the interpreters are content with the option of remote interpreting if such problems are overcome. Half of the participants think that communication will take place in virtual reality in the near future. In addition, 61% assume that remote interpreting will gain considerable importance in the near future. After their first interpreting experience in Second Life, the interpreters were asked to fill in a post-test. Accordingly, participants think that interpreting in Second Life is interesting, fun, and practical, and the explanations in advance were sufficient. All participants stated that they did not encounter any technical problems. This might imply that distractions can be avoided if the participants are duly informed and the system runs smoothly. All participants think that remote interpreting is a promising possibility in terms of both practice and training. Likewise, they agree that this new environment would contribute to improving skills and diversifying content in interpreting classes. All of them are willing to use Second Life in their own classes, and they mentioned that getting feedback from the trainers is an advantage for students' professional development. The preliminary survey was also given to uh, students, 18 uh, participants participated in the survey. They are all third and fourth year uh, translation and interpreting st students. Only three students mentioned that they are not comfortable with using technology, 
most of the participants uh, said they were not familiar with 3D virtual worlds and half of the participants stated that they had stage fright. Uh, they also mentioned some distracting factors in laboratory settings like peers' voice. Most of the students stated that they are satisfied with the current educational setting. However, uh, they all agreed that out of class experience will contribute greatly to their careers as interpreters. Um, as you can see, a high number of students think that after graduation, they need to practice interpreting by themselves in, a, in order to be, become successful interpreters. Likewise, uh, a high number of students think that wor virtual learning environments would increase the number and diversity of exercises for interpreting practice. A virtual learning environment where they can study independently would help them build their interpreting skills. Most of them agree with this statement as well. And to see uh, whether this also works in practice, we uh, conducted an exper experiment with the students. Uh, there were 17 participants, uh, 14 of whom were included in the analysis. There are all 40 students in the interpreting module. Uh, we gave them pre-test vocabulary tests and they listened to speeches before they interpreted them. Uh, they were asked to conduct two interpreting, uh, simultaneous interpreting tasks in, in the laboratory environment using Smart Class and in Second Life using Chever app interchangeably. And after that, uh, right after the interpreting session, they were asked to fill in two short surveys. When we look at their attitude towards uh, and their performance in the new virtual learning environment, uh, we are still comparing their performances in the lab environment and the second life environment. And uh, when we look at the post-survey results, uh, post-test results, we see that most students find the experience interesting, enjoyable, and practical. Some of them were distracted in their cell environment, uh, but difficulty level of the speech seemed to have more impact on perceived success in performance than working environment. And off-campus access to virtual learning environment and self-study is perceived as an easy and convenient task. Suggestions by the interpreters and students include improvements to the system and corpora in general. For example, visual materials should be made available to the interpreter in order to make the environment closer to real-life situations. Content could include more diverse material in terms of theme and setting, also, pronunciation, memory, terminology exercises could be included. Being able to make adjustments related to speaker's voice are among other suggestions. As for the future perspectives, uh, the performance of novice and professional interpreters in Second Life will be compared through the in-depth analysis of interpreter interactions on micro and macro levels. Adding new languages to our virtual environment is among the future perspectives of this study. The input obtained from professional interpreters and students will help us improve our corpora uh, and improve this new working environment, contributing to, link, to the link between practice and training and promoting an integrative view on this field of study. Thank you.